themselves at trial on, and on appeal. The appeal proceeded without oral argument. Mr. Ackham alleges he was denied fair trial because he was unable to call an employee of the bank who dealt with the, the mortgage and that that was supposed to be placed on the on the house purchased by the parties when they moved from Calgary to Redcliffe. He says this evidence would have shown that his wife had told the banker she was thinking of separating. That paragraph's a lie. She did not tell the banker she was thinking of separating. She told the banker she was going to separate prior to moving, months prior to moving. So I don't know what where those judges found that in the appeal book. And I want to know, and I, I, in a, I want a judicial inquiry to find out. I want them to show me where they found that. I want Allison Redfern to to uh, to uh, trigger a, a, a judicial inquiry and say where do they find that. Uh, let's get on reading. The appeal, the employee had phoned Mr. Acton and asked him about the separation, explained that a separation might affect whether they received a mortgage. Mr. Acton then phoned his wife and she denied a statement. And she denied the statement. She did not deny the statement. She admitted to the statement and she admitted that to the bank employee. So that's a lie. Uh, that's, that's two lies. Let's get on to lie number three. According to Mr. Acton, this evidence would have shown that his wife had told the banker that she was thinking of separating. Well, that's a reiteration of the first lie, the third lie, so that's three lies. Let's keep reading. He submits this evidence might have changed the trial judgment. Mr. Acton also submits he was denied a fair trial because he was taken by surprise by documents. Yes, I was taken by surprise by documents. Uh, but what the lie is, at the very end of that sentence, it says, documents induced at trial. Documents could not be adduced to trial pursuant to Alberta Rural Court 158.5 subsection 1E, including emails sent to him by which his wife used to cross-examine me on. Well, I wouldn't mind her using those, you know, cross-examining me on those exhibits if they had been served pursuant to uh, the Canada Evidence Act where they could have only been served seven days ahead of trial, but that's the boundary that uh, that judges jumped over because they have to protect the integrity of their of the trial judges judge from depriving me of the Canada Evidence Act and uh, depriving me of the of the rule of court of adducing evidence. So we're going to have a quick look at the rule of adducing court. It says right there the uh, it could not be adduced at trial unless it was. Uh, unless it was uh, produced into the action prior to even coming to trial. And it wasn't. So let's go to the uh, factums. And I'll, I can't show you where, it's, where they could have not found this in the factums. I can only show you what the factum said. And it doesn't coincide with what they're saying in their judgment there from what's underlined in red. We're going to uh, isolate those lies. We're going to get them down to, uh, and we're going to number them like line number one and line number two and line number three and four as we can see line number one and line number two are the are pretty much you know the, are the exact same lie same lie said twice uh, so let's get into the line number uh, uh, one and three here uh, it says he's he 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 says this evidence would have shown that his wife had told the banker she was thinking of separating and then it's reiterated again here in line number three. It says, according to Mr. Actum, this evidence would have shown his wife had told the banker she was thinking of separating. That's those two are an outright lie. Right, the whole sentence is are outright lies because this is not as what is according to Mr. Actum, according to what I inform the uh, appeals court judges in the appeal material. It does not say that, and that is not according to me, Mr. Actum. You know, set, uh, line number one, his, uh, he says this evidence would have shown his wife and told the banker she was thinking of separating. It would have shown that she, that, that she was thinking of separating. It would have shown that she was separating, and she, did not, she didn't deny it, like in line number two. It says, and she denied the statement. My ex-wife did not deny the statement. And that that had nothing to do with 
with the, the with the trial at all. Like, I don't know what they're saying there, but anyways, it's a lie. Lie number one, lie number two, and lie number three. And lie number four, we all know that's a lie. Documents adduced to trial. Documents could not be adduced to trial because, uh, according to the uh, rule of adducing uh, evidence. Uh, according to, to uh, Alberta Rural Court 158.5, subsection 1E, those documents that my ex-wife brought it into trial could not be adduced only seven days before trial, as it states in the uh, Canada Evans Act. So now I'm going to show you what is what they're saying is according to Mr. Actum that this evidence would have shown that Show that his wife had told the banker she was thinking of separating. No, I don't know where they got that from, but it doesn't. It doesn't say it the factors. But what I'm going to show you is it says something totally different. So let's get into the factors. And what I'm going to show you is contrary to these lies here. Lie number one, two, and three. What I'm going to show you is uh, from my fact of the bottom half of page four and the bottom half of page five, and what I read you is contrary to the fact that. Uh, what you see here is a lie. Bottom half of page four. Let's read it. Between the time the Actum sold their Red Cliff home and before the mortgage approval for, for uh, their Red Cliff home, Kim Smithman of ATV, ATV Financial, the loans officer in charge of the mortgage approval, she called Mr. Actum because she was concerned about the mortgage application and she had left. She had asked if Mr. Actum, if, if we, the Actum, separating? Ken Smithman also said that mortgage companies are skeptical about approving couples' mortgages applications that are in the midst of separation. This was of a shock to Mr. Actum, so Mr. Actum said no, and that was the first he had ever heard of it. Then Mr. Actum said he would have a talk with Mrs. Mrs. Actum, and we'll uh, get back to her soon. Mr. Actum proceeded to call Mrs. Actum at work, and Mrs. Actum explained that Kim from ATV called and what she called about. Then Mrs. Actum explains to Mr. Actum that she called ATV some time ago to inquire about taking over the mortgage and buying me out because we are in the, we are fighting at the time. Then we discussed that we now need to convince ATV that we are not separating. So we did somehow convince ATV that we were not separating and they did uh, accept our mortgage application and we did move to Redcliffe on October 10th, 2002. During, uh, during our mortgage approval period I did ask Kim from uh, ATV of, uh, of how she how she know about the Actums, uh, know about Mrs. Actum calling the branch and saying that we the Actums were separating and if I could get a record of it. She said she read it in the ATV ATV's internal documents and the only way possible to get copies of them is by way of court order. But now if we look at uh, the bottom of page uh, five of the, of the um, uh, 